So I'm still thinking about what to do with these videos and what makes the most sense for me. So I thought that it would be nice to experiment with just using it a bit as an art journal, like telling you what's in my mind and what I am in my career and how I'm developing myself and how I'm growing and all that. And I thought, yeah, that right now I'm in a very key moment. I mean, you probably saw it in the last video, if you saw it, but I'm pregnant, uh, quite pregnant, and I feel, and this is so curious, I feel that in my artwork, I'm also gestating, like, I feel I'm like in between stages, I'm not really sure where it's gonna develop. I think it's just, you know, like probably my body's gestating, so my mind also is with everything that's around my life. Uh, but it's quite nice. I think that this can bring me to a different space and I think I can probably, yeah, find out other things about myself on the art. What I want to share and where I am at at the moment is uh, some years ago I bought an iPad and I thought, wow, I, I felt so free and all of a sudden my work clicked and the quality of my work went better and it was amazing and I got all these opportunities I even finally um, decided that I found my voice and felt that oh everything was you know like clicking together aligned and, and it was great it was really nice and I from this I got a lot of opportunities from galleries and from clients and also confidence as an artist, you know, like, oh yeah, maybe I am really an artist that it's making it, you know, all that. Yeah, it, it was really, really great. And I kept working that way and finding that way exciting during, yeah, since then until maybe this last summer or something, you know. So 2019 to 2021 summer <laughs> i don't know what happened that summer yeah i know what happened that summer i moved from uh from city so i guess that's also part of the change and all of a sudden i felt that this way my voice this way that i figured out that i knew how it worked that was working for me and for others that was bringing income in and it still is you know but this way all of a sudden wasn't exciting anymore so I'm creating and I'm making things on the iPad and you know I'm, I'm creating good work but at the end of it I don't have this feeling of wow this was amazing what a great experience uh, painting is so cool you know and you know it's okay if it doesn't happen for a couple of times it's like okay well whatever it will come back but no no it has been many months of feeling like something's missing you know like um, I'm not finding I know I will like a piece when I'm in the piece and I'm like oh, I'm a genius <laughs> you know like uh, this is amazing I did so well and I'm so happy about this and I want to paint and I forget to eat and all that then I know I'm in the right path you know when I'm feeling this confidence and it's not even about the quality because of course I'm learning so the quality of my work it's steadily not like from one day to the other but steadily going up I'm, I'm learning new things I'm always studying because I'm a bit of a nerd and so it's not even about that it's not that the work is bad or anything but it's just like my heart the part of me is like yeah I've seen that before and where have I seen it I've seen it on my past work right yeah I'm in a moment of okay so what's next you know So guys, how can we find excitement and why do we lose excitement in the first place? I think in my case it was about monotony, doing similar things and working on the same process which initially was new to me. So initially there was a risk, there was a known and it brought me a lot of joy when it went well. But repeating the process slowly made it predictable and known and just comfortable. 
and what I like the most about painting is this moment where you don't know where things are going. I'm not really sure if it's gonna, you know, come out well, but it turns out that it, everything clicks at some point and it makes sense and it's just such a happy moment. Also, at first I just did it for myself, expressing things that were important to me. But as more eyes fell on me, I started feeling pressure, and what was an intimate process of expressing a feeling became the need to prove myself that I was good enough to deserve those eyes on my work, as well as opportunities. So instead of focusing on being me, I focused on being better. And here's the thing, it's so weird, but I was trying to be better to deserve what I already got. So I guess that I had a bit of an imposter syndrome. But what got me out of that was realizing that the artists are the ones that have to decide what is good or bad work, and that there are no rules for that. Things that fall in your taste, what makes you feel and touches you, will be what you consider good art, right? So what if it's not 100% technically perfect, if in the end does its job, and I feel pleasure when I look at it, and I also feel proud, it's almost like I was waiting for someone who knew some rules I didn't know and told me, this is pretty bad, how did you get here? It was probably luck. So it's out of your hands and you can't continue to have success with it. But how empowering is to say, I'm pretty proud of this, I actually love what I do and I'm glad that you like it too and that you can see this thing that sparks joy in me and feel something. So part of losing the excitement when creating was actually an inner battle. Nothing of those things happened. It was all fear and I guess I need to realize that I'm the one that has to be the art director in my art process and decide what's good and what's bad and the skills I admire and pursue. And this is such an important change of mindset for me because if I'm the one that decides what's good and what's bad, I'm not uh, needing, for example, social media to validate each piece I make and to uh, tell me that each thing I do is good. I already know what I consider good or bad and I don't need to use the rest of the world as a guide so I can get deeper and deeper into what moves me and probably deeper and deeper into what moves others, you know? So, and I feel in this stage now, I know the quality I want my work to have and the problem is that the process I used for making artwork feels a bit boring and predictable. And as I said, what I like the most about making a painting is this moment where everything is a mess, super chaotic. I don't know where it's going, but there is a color, a shape or something that clicked in this mess and it's sort of a guide to get the rest of the piece done. The issue is that to create that mess and moment of chaos, I have to lose all the tension and do new things and use different colors, patterns, textures, I don't know. I have to do something weird and make it happen at some point, you know? Like, at some point it makes sense and then it, I feel this gratification and this, yeah, I think this stage of almost the subconscious, you know? Like, uh, I let it took over and, and trusted in it and something fun happened. So it's a bit like about losing control and that's what I like the most. So if the tool I'm using became predictable, getting into that messy stage is a bit difficult, isn't it? And so I started trying new things. So now that I'm at this point where I'm not really sure when my work is going and what I want to do with it and how to find this excitement again, I decided, okay, mm, I'm going to try and do new things and see if that can make me feel more fun and if that can make me feel uh, better about it and it feels, yeah, you know, I can find this excitement again. And it was amazing. I started painting on the sketchbook and since the first painting I felt, wow, this is, you know, the exact thing I was missing. This feeling of excitement and being surprised and when you really like your piece, uh, yeah, it, it's just, that's the feeling I live for. <laughs> it just feels so nice. Um, so, yeah, I started making some sketches some experiments I can show you just very rough uh, stuff in the beginning quite loose and then 
I won't show you everything, but uh, yeah, this page, for example, I really enjoyed. What else? And then the other thing I did, a part of painting with acrylic wash on the sketchbook, which was really fun, was um, I'm a portrait artist, and portraits is what I do most of the time. So I decided to start painting other things too, to find out, you know, more and to, yeah, have a, you know, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. So I painted these pairs that I really liked and some cheeks some mandarins and yeah I tried to open up a bit and the things that I thought defined my work maybe are not there forever you know so I can continue to work on it and see what happens if I'm painting new things will they appear in my regular work or not you know so yeah really enjoying it a lot but um, even though I like it the quality of this work is not as good, you know? I feel it's a good work, I feel it's fun work, but I strive for a very realistic look and uh, there is something about the lighting and the atmosphere that I really enjoy and that I want to keep in my work. And those pieces, even though they are fun, uh, they don't have that, so I'm experimenting and I'm finding this excitement again, but at the same time the result is not as high quality, so I cannot go to the same clients or to the same exhibitions with these paintings, right? So I feel that I'm a bit in, a, like, uh, in an ugly stage, and it's not that it's uh, ugly or anything, but it's just it's, it didn't click yet, so I have to feel I have to see how to merge these new things I'm finding out and you know, this um, fun I'm finding with the paint and all that with uh, something a bit more elevated and that could be mixing this with the brocade maybe that's exciting and I can feel like nice there or I can spend more hours on my paintings on traditional and see if that is something that gets that quality I'm looking for. I still don't know. to start painting a portrait in the sketchbook to see if I can experiment with the portrait and bring it to somewhere different. And painting with acrylic wash has brought me so much joy lately. There's something about it. As I said, I was missing getting my hands messy and also the texture of the paint on paper, which is very difficult to emulate on the screen. And I also enjoy the messy brush strokes and the movement of it all. The issue I have with painting on traditional is that I don't consider it like my real job. Don't ask me why. I'm aware that normally it's the other way around, where people tend to see more value on traditional than digital work. But my digital work has been what has been paying my bills and also what I have been exhibiting until now. So in a way I consider it my job, um, my real work and when I paint in the sketchbook I feel I'm procrastinating a bit or just learning or I don't feel I'm working. So yes, I have found something exciting but it hasn't clicked yet or matured for me. And what I'm looking for right now is how can I bring this stage to my work, this fun process of painting on the paper, how can I guide it to become something that I would hang on my next exhibition as a finished artwork, for example. And from the top of my head, and this is the first test that you're seeing me painting, I think this could be a mix between digital and traditional, or another test could be working on traditional work during more hours. In this case, I decided to go for the easy route and mix uh, what I already know and what's more new to me. So I took this painting and I imported it in Procreate and I added more layers to see where I could bring it. And I liked it, it was really fun. And I got focused and inspired when finishing digitally. 
The thing right now when I'm working on digital is I get a bit bored so I can see that maybe after 20 minutes of painting I'm already mm, looking at my phone or mm, going to snack something or you know like I can see that I'm trying to in a way get out of that because I find it not so fun. But in this case, yes, I felt really focused and there and present and yeah, it was great. And I was able to create that mess I like and I was talking about that I like this messy stage where nothing really makes sense and I have to push things a little bit to make them click. I duplicated the face and added it into the hands and here is where I really got inspired and it clicked for me. And even though this was fun, I'm still in the process of finding that excitement again and I'm not sure what I'm looking for exactly. Like this test was so great and I learned a lot from it, but I know I have to keep looking because it's like, yeah, keep pushing, you know, like keep digging as they say. It can uh, get somewhere cool, I think, if I continue with it. And yeah, I don't know what I'm looking for exactly, but I will know when I see it. Um, you can expect a, a new video soon continuing these explorations and experiments of me trying to develop what I'm doing to somewhere else. So here you can see the process in Procreate and how it all came together in the end. I really hope you enjoyed and um, yeah, let me know where you are at and if you feel identified with this or if uh, you're in a totally different stage in your artwork, I'm really looking forward to reading in the comments where you are at and if you liked this type of video. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know at which point you all are, you know, I think many different people are watching this video probably, um, but I think that you know we all strive and try very hard in the beginning to find our voice so find a way to speak a different way to speak your own way to speak it's like creating a different vocabulary that it's yours and that people get to know and understand over time and we all try to get there no like practice and get better at painting but also create consistent cohesive work that is your language, right? And I think the time I felt that was when I started doing that work digitally. I felt, wow, I found it. But what I did not expect and what I should have expected and what you should all expect is, yeah, but it will change too, right? It's not that, oh, I found it and this is forever. Um, I found it and I have fun with it and now it makes a lot of sense, but I will also have to develop myself and try new mediums and do new things and create new, yeah, new work and, and push it forward, right? So I'm at this moment where it's a bit strange because I thought I had it figured out, you know, which was great to think. Um, but yeah, it turns out that no, of course, um, it will change over time and sometimes it doesn't feel that it fulfills you anymore. So. Yeah, let's keep going forward. If I go through this, maybe I find something better, right? Like, uh, who knows? Like, it's unknown and I'm not really sure, yeah, what will come from it and I don't know. But I think, you know, if I do it a hundred times, maybe at some point I'm like, oh yeah, I'm so glad I did this because it actually brought me there and I feel much more comfortable here for the next three years <laughs> until it happens again. Uh, I feel much more comfortable here and I like it and I, I can express myself from here with excitement and passion, right? That's my hope. Um, it could also be that I completely lose myself, and, which is the fear, you know, like I, I lose myself and I make work that change so much that I don't even see myself in it, which, yeah, I think that's the fear of doing new things in the art world, but you always will know what's you and what speaks to you, right? So I'll do it anyway. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this is it. All right. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.